Metal Jesus here, and I am back with John Riggs. Yes! I know. Do Always it. happy to be in here. And I have been waiting to do this video for so long because we need on my channel a NES Hidden Gems video. I read the comments <laughs> on all your videos, whether I'm in them or not. Yes. I'm in, sometimes I'm here, sometimes I'm kind of a shadowy character in the background, um, going back to the days of the immortal John Hancock. Yes. All the Reggie videos, all the Kinsey videos, and I'm going through the, I'm, this is way back before you used lighting and you had half of your collection. And my I'm hair like, was shorter up to here. It was somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah. And my hair was actually a little bit longer than it was, you know? <laughs> um, you didn't have any Nintendo Entertainment System Hidden Gem videos. I know. And the Hidden Gems are my personal favorite videos on your channel. And so you were the perfect guy. And I was like, if you're gonna do one, call me, because I want to be here. That's right. And so he has brought 10 NES Hidden Gems, dude. This is gonna be awesome. You know, I say, you, you keep saying Hidden Gems, and I know I said Hidden Gems too, but it's like... You're reluctant. I'm reluctant because to me, they're not hidden but they should be explored. Because sometimes, some of these games actually might be games you see all the time, but you haven't picked them up yet. For one reason or another. Maybe just because the box art looks weird. Well, Maybe because they're like, oh, this game's five bucks, that can't be any good. I'm telling you, it's really good. Well, I'm looking at the titles here. I don't recognize any of them. So for me, they're hidden gems. They're, We're going with it. We're, let's, call it let's call it Nintendo Entertainment <laughs> System Hidden Gems. All right, let's take a look. All right, dude, show me games I need in my collection. All right, let's start off with, oh, Controversy, North and South. Oh, interesting. You can play as the North, or you can play as the South. Huh. All right, uh, super awesome game. Two player, if you want it to be, or okay. you can, we can do one player too. And but what kind of game is it? It is, um, there's a few different games involved. Okay. It's, uh, okay, you, you start off with the map of the, Eastern United States during the Civil War. Right. And you pick your side. And then it turns into a, you have to gain more states. So if you're playing as the North, for instance, you have to move to, you have to put your characters on the Southern states, but there's people from the South on those and they're protecting their territory. Wow, interesting. So a, there's huh. a few different mini games that'll go into. It can go into a mini game where you choose between your horses, your cannon, and your infantry and then you have to kind of fight each other. The horses can go fly through and you can slash people on the way through. Cannon, power up your shot, <laughs> fire it. So you have to keep on moving between the two so you're not killing your guys, but you're killing the other guys and trying to do that to gain territory. What an interesting game. I had no idea that any, I mean, that, that would be something to be on the PC back in the day, but right. I would never expect it to be on the original Nintendo. It does have a very, it has a PC kind of feel to it. Does you it? Because you kind of click around, move to where you're going to. You can, um, hmm. when you get more points, you get more people that you can move around. It can also turn into um, a little uh, side-scrolling, uh, almost platformer, where you're trying to capture the flag. But as you're trying to capture the flag, more and more enemies come out, and of course, you know, one punch sends them flying like a cartoon character. <laughs> um, but you have to get to the flag before the time runs out. So there's a lot of different mini games in it. Oh. Um, super fun game. I know there's the recent controversy with the Confederate flag and all that, and that's what I was like, like, oh, that reminds me of this game. <laughs> and then someone was like, what are you talking about? I mean, you heard of that game. And that's Hidden Gems. So. Yeah, wow, that's cool, man. That's so awesome. North and South, if you can find one of these, I'd say grab it. It's, it's a lot of fun. I uh, still play it with my friends today. Cool. This game I had to bring up because you get indignant about games sometimes. You're like, how dare you sell that for five bucks? It's easily worth 10 bucks <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And I see that a lot with this game. It's called Rescue the Embassy Mission. Oh, well, I think because, I mean, it looks like, like it might be a budget title, although that that's pretty cool though. It's got like some dude on there and busted <laughs> through a window. But I can see though where you know sometimes people base all that on yeah. you know, the name or the or the, the yeah. cover, right? I've never heard of that. I've never heard of that company. As I, you're gonna sell that for a dollar or two. You know what? Same publisher as the last game. Yeah, yeah, actually, now that you mention it, look at huh, that. I'm seeing a trend here. No, I think I might have to look through the other ones here and see what's <laughs> going on here. And like the last game, uh some mini game elements. Oh, okay. You start off with uh, stealth. You're trying to get well, it's it's a hostage situation. So you have to get your team to the building, rescue the hostages, kill the bad guys. And you do that in a few different steps. The hmm. first one is a uh, stealth mode where you send your characters out um, to the streets to go to the building, but there's these spotlights. And as soon as the spotlights hit you, you're gonna start seeing uh, guns being fired at you. So you have to like, you know, jump into the bushes or jump in a window or crawl and duck and roll to, uh, to get to your post. Interesting. Um, once you find your post, then that's your sniper. 
So then before you go inside the building, you can look through the windows, kind of, uh, it reminds me of this old arcade game called um, Empire City 1931, I think it's called. Um, think of a silent scope, how about that? Okay, okay, silent yeah. scope, sure. Okay. Let's call it that. Um, <laughs> so you go in and you see the windows and you see like these silhouettes in the windows. So when you see one, then you shoot them and that's one less person you have to kill inside the building. Wow, So that's kind of fun. And then after that, your little rope down, jump in the window, and then it turns into kind of a first person view going through the, um, going from room to room and uh, killing the bad guys and rescuing the hostages. Wow, sounds so, sounds awesome. Action packed. Um, hmm. Every every time you do that, it sounds like a lot, but all that I just explained, you could probably do it like in five minutes time. And this is like a five dollar, ten dollar game. It's it's a budget game. You're you're gonna see this in game stores and conventions. Well, I don't, of course, I said this, that now. This video. Now. <laughs> um, it's it's a uh, it's it's a it's cost efficient. Let's yeah. Call that. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I love that. Um, I love this game. It's called Monster Party. It's one of my favorites. Monsters at a party. What, what's not to love? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, there's a storyline to it that sounds like any old Nintendo game. You know, it's like you're a boy walking home from school or something like that, and you run across a magical phoenix or griffin or something. And <laughs> okay. So then you're in this magical as you do, monster, you know. as you do yeah. you know, every time. Um, you come home. Oh, then you're in this magical world. Come home. You're in this magical world, and then it just it looks weird. The graphics are great for Nintendo standards. The sound is great, um, and it's just creative. Like the enemies you run across and the bosses you run across, um, the t the the label art means Dude, nothing about anything. But that looks awesome. I'm I'm digging that la label art and there. Nothing nothing about that even is. Oh, okay. About. Well, <laughs> they just say hey, we're making a game called Monster Party. Design let's, this let's label. Let's throw some random monsters on it, huh? Um, but the game itself is really fun because you play as the boy with the bat. Um, you can either hit it, the enemies, or if the enemies are shooting at you, you can hit the bat and the bullets will go back to them and kill them. Hmm. Um, the bosses are very, very creative. Each one's different. Like there's a pumpkin that's throwing little pumpkins at you and stuff like that. Hmm. Um, and just the the levels are cool. Each level's you know has a little different twist to it and everything. Uh, it's just a fun kind of platformer game. You know that's the thing, fun, right? It's fun. That's it's, that's what we care about the most. It's just a fun, fun game and. It makes you want to play longer because you can't wait to see who the next, and every level has like two or three bosses that you got to fight. And each one is very unique and very fun and mm. uh, and very creative. It's just a fun game. Wow, that's cool. Monster Party. All right, I like it. We got to talk about Legend of the Ghost Lion. Um, I could tell you about the boring story. Uh, just glance at the uh, label art there if you would. Wow, that looks like a uh, late 80s uh, 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 Skinamax. <laughs> that sounds about right. Uh, yeah, with a white tiger and a, and a sexy uh, lady on there. Interesting. Uh, I, 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 sh I don't know if my mom would have bought me this back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. No. Uh, maybe, and maybe that's why it didn't sell so well anyway. Uh, it's a fun RPG, though. Um, really? You, you play the role as a girl. I mean, the story is uh, the white lion attacks the village. The parents who you become you become the parents. Uh, the parents go out to, to find out why did this mystical white lion attack our village? Hmm. And then the parents are lost. Well, the little girl says, I'm going to find my parents. And then she gets in the search for her parents, gets whisked away to a magical land. Hmm. Nintendo game. Sure. And, um, and then it becomes a very cool RPG, but it's cool because the protagonist is a little girl and not too many Nintendo games featured women yeah. as a starring role. And she looks like a badass, I will say. She's, well, got, she's got the, uh, what, the the workout pants on though, you know, like the spandex. Absolutely. But, and, and kind of the uh, Olivia Newton-John uh, sweatband <laughs> at the top there. <laughs> um, I wish you played as her, but instead you play as like a little eight-year-old who looks nothing like the label art. Well, that's it. I'm taking it back. That's right. <laughs> Never mind. Let's keep this gym hidden. <laughs> Um, it's still a fun RPG, and it uses instead of like instead of having uh, hit points, you have courage, and then as soon as you run out of courage, then you go back to like your starting point or your last hmm. save or whatever. Um, and you still use it's just like a traditional RPG. You power ups along the way and gain experience. Um, it uses the uh, like if you win, she'll wink at you, which is kind of nice because it'll show her face when it goes from the face, uh, her face to the enemy back and forth. And then if she gets hit, she has this really kind of distraught, like, oh, I feel so bad that she got hit. Because she's like this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, super fun RPG. And a lot of people haven't heard of it. So I want to show Yeah, it. that's awesome. And if nothing more, the label. Oh, yeah, bit. totally. <laughs> we'll do that for you. This is another kind of fun game. Um, big fan of this is uh, Worm Journey to the Center of the Earth. Um, you are a, you journey to the center of the earth. Are you a worm? You're not a worm. Okay. You play a uh, female with green hair, who's not Samus Aran. <laughs> Even though you're journeying 
through space and time and ships and uh, crawling through uh, alien lands, and that, you have green hair and you're a woman, you're not Samus Aran. That's a pretty cool label there, though. That's pretty that, awesome. That is a pretty cool label. That looks like a label or a, like a, an album cover for Journey or something. Right? <laughs> it you know? it kind of does a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of those little, uh, what's the techno drone uh, little drilling things from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Kind of reminds me of that. Oh, yeah. It has a, a few elements to it. It starts out, the, it starts out as a uh, shmup. Mm. You go through the shmup stage, mm. and then there's some uh, boss element where you're shooting. You have to talk to your teammates to build up the power to kill the bad guy. And by doing that, you have to, like, you know, you talk to different people on your ship. And it'll say, one guy will say, like, I don't know who that guy is. And so you get nothing out of that. But then the scientist might say, oh, that's uh, this kind of guy. And then you talk to someone else, like, oh, yeah, I've heard of that guy. You have to shoot him in the eye. And then the more you do that, then you build up enough. When you get to 100%, then you actually finally kill the guy. Interesting. Um, so then it has that element, and then it also does have a non-Metroid, because she has green hair and touring alien lands and everything, um, a very Metroid-esque, <laughs> going going through and exploring alien land and shooting the bad guys. You can also do it, or you can kick them, too. You can do like a Shawn Michaels super kick, or shoot them with a gun. Wow, okay. this sounds like a game I, I would like. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's worth checking out. And it has cutscenes and everything, except for all the cutscenes are the same. It's like this, just different words. Huh. So you know, you know when it's about oh, to go to a cutscene, yeah. it's going to be the same images every time, <laughs> but it might say something different. So that's awesome. It's 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 worth checking out though. Okay. Oh, never mind. Uh, well, can I just block yeah, that right here? You got you need to clean that, dude. Either yeah. this is a really well loved game or one that you know has been sitting around near your. Uh... Let me tell you something, kind sir. This game still plays. I don't care what it looks like. <laughs> And you'll see, you'll see a game later on that a looks even worse. A true gamer right here, you know. Never mind what it looks like. If it plays, I'm all right. That's right. That's right. This is one of my favorite puzzle games of all time. It's called Kickle Cubicle. Hmm. It is a fun, puzzly, if you like. Of all time. Of all time. Wow. Um, I I don't want to use the Lolo reference because the Adventures of Lolo, where it's very cartoony, very cute, very colorful, and it's a puzzle. It's a different kind of puzzle, though. Um, in Kickle Cubicle, you freeze the enemies and then turn them into frozen blocks of ice. And then when you kick those blocks of ice, you can either pango smash, you I was know, the say, other characters. Like pango, right? right. Um, but because you're on an island, when you kick the blocks off the island, it turns into another platform. Oh. And you can create those platforms to get to um, to, the, to the items that you're trying to collect. Ooh, I love pango. Okay, this sounds interesting. So it's like pango, lolo. It's pango lo. <laughs> it's Kickle Cubicle, it, and it really is uh, seriously one of my favorite uh, puzzle games uh, okay. for any system. It's just a fun game, and it's super cutesy cool. and fun. And there's well, then you should like take a, care of it, like a hundred <laughs> levels. I do take care of it. <laughs> you play it. That 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 is showing it love. Give it a bath. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is another one I absolutely love. It's called Nightshade. Hmm. Uh, the story of Nightshade is he's crime fighter detective guy. And gets zero Night love. Shade. Gets zero love from everyone. <laughs> Nobody knows his name. Um, the writing in it is hilarious. It's very, very comical. Oh, really? Um, but as he's going around and actually fighting crime, then your notoriety gets higher up. Mm. And the more that happens, the more people actually know you and recognize you. Because you'll be walking down the street and you'll see, you know, a guy with a tug of war battle with an old lady in her purse. So then you fight the guy, and. Um, you get more notoriety. Hmm. And that's such a small part of the game because the game by itself in nature is very uh, Maniac Mansion like. It's oh, like a, really? it's a point and click like adventure uh, style. Game. Yeah, it is. It's an oh. adventure game. In fact, you start the game when you first pop it in and hit start. The very first thing that happens in the game is you're tied to a chair and a bomb is about to go off. Oh. And then there's a candle in the room. So you're like, okay, I can scoot towards the candle, burn the ropes, yeah. hopefully before the bomb goes off, or you can, you can, if you hide behind the wall, the bomb will huh. go off and it won't blow you up too. Um, but then you find items along the way. It's like, you know, I'm going to, I find a key, and then you use the key in something and gain something oh, else. okay, yeah. Um, so it does that too, but then it has that fighting element too, where it drops into a versus fighter mode, and you have to kill the other guy to progress in the game. So I noticed, remind me, I, I, that this is an Ultra Games. And what is that? Because I, I know there's a history behind Ultra Games. Right? Um, the story of Nintendo, and I, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but the summarized version is Nintendo said for the D Nintendo Entertainment System. Every game company could only release something like three games a year. Oh, I remember this. Okay. Um, so Konami said, but we have all these games, so we'll make Ultra. And that way Konami will release three and Ultra. So this is technically Konami. It's a, it's a Konami game oh, by, okay. by its nature. Um, hmm. 
Well, Konami was kicking ass on the NES. So. Konami, yeah, Konami was one of the kings uh, yeah. for the NES for sure. Huh. And uh, and Nightshade is just a fun game. Love the comedy writing. And instead of dying in the game, you get captured, and then it turns into another point and click puzzle of That's like, nice. like very James Bond where it's like haha I have you tied to the conveyor belt <laughs> Do you want me to talk? No Mr. Bond I want you to <laughs> die <laughs> um, So then you have to figure out how to get out before you die or the, and then you'll die for sure mm. but if you can figure out the puzzle That's of, nice. like so, going down the conveyor belt and you see oh well, here's these levers here when it's by my foot I'll use the lever with my foot and then I'll jump out and then I'll go right back up and that's nice so it gives you like kind of another try it does give you another try but hmm. it's uh, it's one of my favorites this is a fun game cool this is the game that every time I've mentioned it recently without the last within the last year or so this one more than any other game I've mentioned is the I've never heard of that game and I'm like, what do you mean you never heard of the Crayon Conquest? Never heard of it. Ah, you bastard. <laughs> it's true. Uh, and that's why I'm bringing it up now. Um, it I love is... looking at the labels. I apologize. No, you please look at the labels. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Because I don't know any of these games. I'm right. Like, wow. It is the biggest... Because it, if you play the Crayon Conquest, you know what I'm going to say. It is... Saying that it ripped off Mega Man would be polite. Mm. It was a downright <laughs> take everything that's awesome about Mega Man. Let's make our own game. It's not even even the label has the kind of Capcom uh, border, although that one's purple instead of mm -hmm. royal yep. blue or whatever Capcom is. Um, but it's done really well, and that's the key. It's right? done really, if you're really, rip really somebody well. Off, at least do a good version of it. The good thing about this one, unlike Mega Man, where you have to fight the boss, you gain their power. In this game, you start with all the powers. Oh, right from the get go. So you already have the power to use your broom to go across. You already have the power to freeze enemies. Um, hmm. You have to use those sparingly, of course, as the game progresses. But it's just a super fun. If you love Mega Man, you played one through six on the Nintendo, and you're just like, man, that's awesome. I wish there was more. You can do this one, and it's totally just like Mega Man, except for you play as a little girl witch. Cool. <laughs> All right. I love it. Worth checking out, absolutely. This is another... File this under the uh, don't laugh at my label. <laughs> but at least I have one. Again, true damn gamer expensive. right here. <laughs> I picked this up for a significant discount because of its label, but it works. And this game is called Cowboy Kid. This one is high up on that... Uh, it'll it'll hurt your wallet if you pick okay. up one of these. I knew this looked familiar because I've seen a copy of this at a local store here in Seattle, and it's not cheap. It's probably been there a long, long time. There's a yeah. reason for it. Yeah. Uh, however, it's really, really good. Okay. Well, you know what? I mean, I don't mind. Like those are the games I I want to be expensive. Right. Are the ones that are good and people want to play. Right. So like if you're actually dropping a hundred bucks for say Wayne's World for the Nintendo, <laughs> which is the absolute worst game ever, uh, then you feel ripped off. But this game actually. Depending on where you find it, uh, how much you get it for, it's it might be worth it. Hmm. Uh, one or two players simultaneous um, has kind of that top down ish three quarter view, um, oh, yeah. and it's just fun. Uh, not really platformer, but you uh, you kill the bad guys. I'm trying to think of like Legend of the Mystical Ninja, hmm. a lot like Legend of the Mystical Ninja, um, but it could be two player, and um, it's just a fun game. It's just you go around and it's it takes place in the wild wild west. And hence the name. Hence the name, Cowboy Kid. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this, this Tom Selleck, Burt Reynolds looking guy on the yeah. cover there. The guy who's missing, there's there's a Native American next to him, but I'm sure you can find like stock image or something for the full label. Yeah, sure. But it's it is it is a really, really, really fun game. And it's um hmm. once you establish yourself as the sheriff, then you can choose which stage you want to go to first. So you have like here's your five, and then you go through and uh, go through the level, go through the map. You can purchase items along the way, you can buy upgrades. Gold is in abundance, like where there's treasure chests, you can keep hitting them and gold keeps popping out of them. Um, you can get better weapons along the way, and it's um, it's a fun game. And it's two-player simultaneous, which I keep forgetting that it is, because it's, it's a really, really great game even by itself. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, and then last, this looks odd to me. <laughs> this, and it is odd when yeah. you play it. This is, I have a story about this. This is the most treasured piece in my collection. Oh, and I'll, I'll tell you why okay. in a moment. <laughs> It's uh, Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom. <laughs> First of all, the name is Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom. Which is pretty... To give you an idea, I, and, and no judge here, okay. one of my favorite movies growing up was Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, okay. so I have no room to judge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is... I've, I've said this before, too. This game is like Shadowgate for vegans. 
because <laughs> it is a okay. it, it's it's a Shadowgate like Deja Vu like un, uninvited uh, could have been on this list too. Yeah. Um, but it's it's like Shadowgate where it's kind of a point and click adventure where you choose where you're going. You look down the street. You can see the sign. Oh, here's where the lake is. You go to the lake. You can you you know grab water. Use the items along the way. You'll get a friend along the way too. Um, and you go through, and the story is your Sir Cucumber. And you're trying to find your princess tomato, and then all the characters in the game are also all fruits and vegetables. And How the hell did you ever <laughs> decide to pick up this game? Um, Have you owned this since it first came out? Um, I hadn't. Okay. And that's the story. <laughs> oh, okay. This is this is a true story. Because I'm I'm like, what? What? Where? Where did you yeah. like? Yeah, salad and tomatoes and adventure. This is this sounds awesome. <laughs> yes, right in there. Um, I did rent it when I was younger. Um, but in the late 90s, when I decided, hey, all these Nintendo games are being liquidated, I'm going to start buying up all the games I can find. Smart. So most of these games I've had since the late 90s when I would go to, I mean, I still have, I didn't bring it, I still have a copy of uh, Bucky O'Hare for the Nintendo that still has the GameStop or the software, etc., mm. like $5 sticker on it. And they put it right on the label, the that's jerks. <laughs> so that's why it still stays on the label. Um, but during my hunting days, I could never find Princess Tamil in the Salad Kingdom. And I wanted it so bad, but I couldn't find it anywhere, and eBay wasn't really a thing yet. Right. And um, so I could never find it. So anyway, my girlfriend at the time, for Christmas, got me that game. <laughs> and it blew my mind, because she was I was like, you get me. <laughs> um, and we've been married 13 years since. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that this game is the reason we've been married for so long. But, but <laughs> it certainly didn't hurt. That is so funny. And that is a true story. Wow. She, my girlfriend bought the game. I couldn't, I mean, I, I'm i from Yakima, Washington. We don't have a whole lot of hunting grounds there so much. So I would come to Seattle almost every other weekend and hit up huh. all the different game stores. This is in the late 90s where you could still go to GameStop and Software, et cetera, and EB Games, Funko Land, and buy Nintendo games. And I could never find that one. That was, that was my, that was, that was it. Well. I would say, based on on its label, yes, it, it that'd be hard sell. <laughs> it is a pretty hard sell by the label. Alone. I mean, because it looks like a, it looks like a very young kids game, right? It or, does. Or, it absolutely does. <laughs> but that's awesome, though, because I love it when games like this surprise me. Yeah, you know what I mean, and kind of break all the normal conventions. That's so cool. Absolutely. So it's like if you love Shadowgate, you gotta huh. play this. And everyone, uh, not too many, not too often, but four or five times in the game, when you actually fight the enemy or the uh, the person, it turns into a, a paper, rock, scissors. Oh, cool. And that's how you defeat them, is by doing paper, rock, scissors. So huh. it's, it's, a, it's a super fun game anyway, but the fact that, you know, my story and everything, um, I would sell or trade off any other, and I have top Earthbound and Dracula X for the, whatever, whatever you want, I'd, <laughs> I'd sell or trade off any of those. I will never get rid of that game. That's really, really awesome. Well, dude, this is actually a really cool video because, I, like I said, I love finding hidden gems. Oh, yeah. I, I love digging deep into a catalog like that and finding those things that, that people either overlook or whatever. So. Right. So some of these games just needed the notoriety to say, if you find it, pick it up. But there's a couple yeah. of them uh, that are just like, if you can find them, it's, it might be worth your while to check out. Yeah, definitely. And we would love to know uh, what you guys would like to see in the second video or the third. I mean, oh, there are so we many. Can, we can keep going. 660. 78 licensed Nintendo games. This is only 10 of them. Yeah. And we know the bigger ones, but even if you count all the bigger ones, you're only counting on basically two hands. So uh, there are a lot of other hidden gems out yeah, there. Yeah, sure. so we'd love to know what you guys would like to see in the next couple of videos. Uh, and uh, also what you thought about this video. We'd love to know. I Absolutely. Mean, uh, and uh, dude, thanks for coming oh, on, man. My pleasure. Always awesome to have you here. My pleasure. Always to be here. Yes. Thanks for <laughs> uh, watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care. It is always a pleasure having Mr. John Riggs on my channel. He and I did a pretty comprehensive NES buying guide a couple weeks back. So I'll link to that up in the corner. You should definitely check it out if you're looking to jump into NES collecting. We've also done some imports and other things like that. So please subscribe to my channel because I release two new videos every week. I'm kind of on a roll. <laughs>